you guys, it's Teresa and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be my April wrap up. Yes, I almost said TBR. But this month I read a total of nine books this time. One of them I had DNF, two were audiobooks, and one was a ebook, and the rest were physical copies. So let's just kind of get into it. The book that I ended up DNFing was one that you guys have seen plenty of times on my TBR, and that is Miss and Legends Classic Tales. Uh, classic Greek, Celtic, Norse, Chinese, African, Native American, and more, but edited by Jake Jackson. I DNF'd this at 72%, which is probably like you should have DNF'd it earlier if that was the case, but it happens. However, while I think this was a really good start, I thought that there were a lot of issues for me with the book, with this book particularly. There were instances with the um, the flow where we would get a large creation myth, but it would break it up into sections, and every section had an introduction where it essentially just kind of explained, like continued on from the last section. I guess is the best way to put it. There were also editorial mistakes I did not particularly enjoy. I thought that. There was one instance where paragraphs were indented farther, like there was even one where a paragraph had e like abruptly ended but continued on in the paragraph after that. And once I got through this book, I thought when I got to the Native American portion and they rec they like referred to Native Americans in like 20 different ways. One was like the Native Americans, Native American Indians, and the last one being just plain old Indians, which I thought to be really kind of um, disrespectful. These are stories that have jet like that have defined cultures over several generations and for you to not treat that with with like respect that is necessary it wasn't something i enjoyed particularly and it kind of made me question the amount of care that had been placed in other the other mythologies that i have read in the book prior so i just had to dnf it because i just wasn't for me anymore. One of the audiobooks I read was actually a reread and that is The Cruel Prince by Holly Black. If you guys don't know what The Cruel Prince is, this is a YA high fantasy where we follow Jude Duarte after she, after her parents were brutally murdered and she and her sisters were taken and transported to the world of the Fae that lives a kind of like in parallel to the modern human world. Now she doesn't fit in for obvious reasons. And the only way she has really found her place was by sword playing and she wishes to become a knight in one of the courts. And now she has she is faced with the task of kind of maneuvering her way around the system but doesn't really really like her. Now I have my I will link my original review to this down below. It's a video. But I gave this a 3.5 out of 5 stars. I believe it's not much different than my actual review. I love this book. I think the Holly Black creates immersive like culture. She creates these wonderful characters that even if you can't relate to them, you still love them either way. She creates this really kind of dark and twisted and true to the narrative of a fairy world. It's not very cutesy and flirty and fun. It's very dark and mysterious and kind of dangerous. My biggest problem was with Jude herself. She seemed to be in a position where her character growth hinged upon continually making an action and then not raising the consequences to her actions and then it just continued from there. I also did not understand. She's immortal so she has no... She, she's not very cared for by anyone who is outside of her immediate family. She also has no idea how the court system primarily works yet somehow she managed to move herself up these ranks and become kind of like the head honcho of an organization and I could not for the life of me wrap my head around it. I also did not really care for the um, romance. I thought that the romance was like not that interesting to me. It kind of ruined the characters, but the individual characters' progressions and like how I viewed them. And it's just, eh. but I will be picking up the sequel soon. I don't know when soon is, but it will happen. The next book I read was the ebook, and that is the novella to the series, and that is *The Lost Sisters* by Holly Black. This essentially is like a letter to. From Taryn to Jude explaining her rationalization for the pat for the her actions in the previous book. I gave this a two out of five stars. I did not enjoy it. I felt that there were certain instances where novellas and short stories can flesh out some of the situations and like add more depth to another part of the novel. However, I felt that Taryn was not part of that situation. I did not like her rationalization of the book or what she's, she did to do the things that she did against Jude. It just did not make sense to me considering they are twins. It just felt very kind of 
rude and it just kind of said that she was like, yeah, I want my dreams too, but unlike you, I will stomp on you to get them. And I did not like that rationalization in the slightest. She tried to romanticize kind of the situation that happened. Not a fan. But I also did not like Tara as a character, so. The next audiobook I read was Sadie by Courtney Summers. If you guys don't know what this is about, this follows is a dual perspective. I read this on audiobook, clearly. And it's a dual perspective where we follow Sadie as she kind of hunts around America after having run away to find her sister's killer. Then the other one being a podcast narrator called from the podcast The Girls, where he has become obsessed with figuring out where Sadie had gone and the events leading up to this to the events for her running away and kind of what happened to Maddie. Now I give this a four to five stars. I love the framing. I think that the audiobook having full cast and the like auditory aspects of it with like the recording, the podcast really helped frame the narrative. I also liked how Sadie struggled with a stutter, but her internal thoughts are very eloquent and it kind of juxtaposes, juxtaposes her, um, what's going on in her head versus what she is able to say. And that really limits what she, how people view her and kind of makes her kind of this character that you root for because of it. The ending had me in tears. I thought that the ending was like marvelous and I really want to know what happened but I think I'm content with where it went and being able to kind of interpret what happened on my own. My biggest issue with this book was that it is very introspective and I don't mind introspective novels, not at all. However, it was introspective in the sense that it would speed up all of a sudden and then the introspectiveness would kick in and slow down drastically or instances where things should have been moving pretty fast paced were slowed down because of the introspection. And so, like I said, four out of five stars specifically for that, but I would highly recommend and I will be adding this, it's a wonderful thriller, and I will be adding this book to my list of collections. Now, aside from The Cruel Prince, I also did two rereads this month, and one of them was The Selection by Kira Cass. If you guys don't know, this is like a mixture between The Hunger Games without the bloodshed and The Bachelor, which I feel like has enough bloodshed of its own. And this follows um, a different time, like a near futuristic time, where um, in order to kind of keep the morale of the situ of the people, they choose at that like girls between the ages of like 16 to like 24, throw their names into a pot, and 35 get chosen to be part of this bachelor situation to fall in love with the prince and see who he chooses, and it kind of gets knocked down from there. Now, America never wanted this situation, and she finds herself throwing her name in there on a whim and is chosen. So I gave this a 4 out of 5 stars? 4.5 out of 5 stars. And this is a reread. I, re I read these books while I was in Ireland, so they, have, they hold a very special place in my heart. I read the first three in Ireland, actually. And it's such a cute and fluffy and contemporary read. I love the characters. They're so bubbly and so energetic and so individual. You can see their own goals and interactions. But however, knowing some of the aspects that happened throughout the series, I feel that there wasn't some framing, like well done framing that could have worked out with how this, um, with how it ended. But however, still enjoy it. My biggest problem was that some aspects of the novel were really outdated, like the plot twist, like with the love triangle and like the girl versus girl situation. But I still loved it nonetheless, and I liked where those aspects of the relationship kind of progress into the series. The next book that I reread was The Mortal Instrument City of Bones by Cassandra Clare. I gave this a 4 to 5 stars. And if you guys don't know, this follows Clary Frey as she is thrust into the world of the Shadow Hunters after finding out she is not human, but a Shadow Hunter herself. Like I said, 4 to 5 stars. I loved seeing where the characters started out and their progression throughout the novels. Um, I think that it's a wonderful starting place and it's just marvelous. Uh, my biggest problems with it was that I really did not like Jocelyn. I understand why she did the things that she did, however, I can't justify why she did them for so long or why she continued to treat Claire like a child. And my biggest issue also was the writing style. I felt that it was very juvenile for me and um, while I understand why it is juvenile, it was still very much like, why are you saying these things? It's not very... it doesn't suit the characters anymore, I think, from where they had, where have they, they've gone. But still, nonetheless, I highly enjoyed it and highly, highly recommend it. The next book that I read in April is The Looking Glass Wars by Frank Bador. I gave this a 3 out of 5 stars. 
I'll have the ra official writing because I forgot to write it down in my notes because I'm stupid. But this essentially is a reimagining of Alice in Wonderland where Alice has been living in Wonderland for her life and then she is suddenly transported out of Wonderland into the real world and is forced to kind of reintegrate herself before being thrust back into Wonderland. I enjoyed this heavily. I think that the writing style was wonderful. I love the characters. They're all so um, different from one another that I never had an issue figuring out who was who. The, this is a really like an awkwardly fast paced read. Like I remember starting it and then I finished it all of a sudden and I was like what the hell do you mean I'm done? My biggest issue with it and why I gave it, oh I gave it a 4 out of 5 stars. Ha! My biggest issue and why I struggled to figure out what was going on was that the brevity of this, some of the chapters, I think that it was really hard to figure out what happened in which scenario or like what how to build the world in my mind when we jumped in from in and out of so many people's heads so often that it was hard to really get into someone's like mind and it was like not even like scene breaking it was like switching chapters and it was really hard for me to picture how Wonderland was supposed to look because of it. But other than that I enjoyed it and I'm picking up seeing red in the near future probably sometime this month if I finish through my um my TBR. The next book that I read is another Alice in Wonderland retelling and that is Splintered by A.G. Howard. I gave this a 3 out of 5 stars. I enjoyed this book. Well, this is another Alice in Wonderland retelling, but this follows Alyssa Gardner who can hear the thoughts of like bugs and insects essentially. And she is distantly related to Alice Liddell who was the inspiration for the Alice in for Alice, uh, Alice's adventures in Wonderland. And now she finds out that her family is actually cursed by something that happened in Wonderland years ago and must now travel into Wonderland to figure out how to stop this curse before it affects her and her mother. Now, like I said, three out of five stars. I enjoyed it. I liked the characters and the world building of this book was absolutely marvelous. What really hit me was that I did not like one of the love interests, Jeb, I think that he was really controlling and manipulative and it just wasn't very um, work. It I couldn't find myself enjoying his presence. I also did not was a, was not a fan of the love triangle. I thought there wasn't much of a love triangle development. It wasn't like she was in love with one guy and then developed the feelings for the other. She was like she was in love with one guy and then she meets the other and it's like, oh right, I did love you somehow magically. So that was my biggest issue, but I really did enjoy the world and Morpheus as a character. So I think I will be jumping back into these series, but I am not as motivated as I am to finish out the series as I was to, fi to finish out um, The Looking Glass Wars. And finally, the last book is the chunker of a book, and that is Empire of Storms by Sarah J. Maas. This is the fifth book in the Throne of Glass series, and we kind of... Things are ramping up in this book. The stakes are getting higher. We see a lot of familial and platonic and romantic relationships finally develop, and I loved it. I give this a 5 out of 5 stars. I thought that it, like, worked out so wonderfully and like everything flowed, the characters had grown so much and every situation was so equally heartbreaking and heart-wrenching from the next. The ending, I had to like stop and go back and reread the ending because I just, my mind was like this is not happening, I am making this up and I had to like reread it a few times to realize what was really happening and then when it happened I sat there and like screamed into the abyss. My biggest issue, though, is that a lot of the writing got repetitive. Like, this is my issue with any Sarah J Maas books. Like, I'm pretty sure you can make a shot game with how many times Reese puts his pants in his pockets, how many times someone has loosed a breath, someone, how many times someone has shrugged their shoulders, and it's, after a while, it's like you can take a shot game of it and probably need to be hospitalized. But other than that, I still highly recommend it, highly enjoy the series, and I really, really, really need to finish it out. But that is it for my April wrap-up. If you guys have any books, that, if you guys have read any of these books, I would love to hear your thoughts on it. So if you guys want to either leave a comment or find me on social media and private message me there, all the links will be down below. Until then, I will talk to you guys everywhere else. And if you guys have any ideas for further videos of mine, uh, please leave those suggestions down below as well. Until then, I'll talk to you guys everywhere else, and I hope you've, you are having a great week. Bye!